Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be going over different parts of the Bay Area. So whether you're relocating from another city or you're moving from one part of the Bay Area to another, this video is for you. Here's the San Francisco Bay Area on a map. Many people refer to it as just the Bay Area and there are about 7.75 million people living here. It's around 6,948 square miles and here you can see how it compares size-wise to other cities. So. Chicago is around one and a half times the size of the Bay Area and the Dallas-Fort Worth area is around 1.3 times the size. There are different subregions within the Bay Area. So there's San Francisco, North Bay, East Bay, South Bay, and the Peninsula. And it's important to note the edges of these boundaries oftentimes are debatable and they're not officially defined. Let's start with San Francisco. So even though San Francisco is Part of the peninsula, it is has its own designation. So San Francisco is the most urban environment in the Bay Area. It is the most densely packed. There's tons of good restaurants. There's good public transportation. Many people don't even have a car when they live there. Um, the eastern side of the city is definitely the more urban part. So all the big buildings are right around here in this area. And then the west side is a little bit more residential and has more of a neighborhood vibe. Once you cross the Golden Gate Bridge, you end up in North Bay. So you start over here in Marin County and there's all kinds of cool hiking trails and nature. You have Muir Woods that has some really old redwood trees that are over a thousand years old and you have Denson Beach, Point Reyes, all types of cool coastal areas. And Marin County is actually the birthplace of mountain biking. But despite that fact, there's actually kind of an anti-mountain biking attitude and a lot of the hiking trails you can't ride a mountain bike on, which is pretty annoying, but um, there are still some trails that you can ride on. Camp Tamarancho is a really, really popular one in the area. Once you start going over here, you get into more wine country. So there are over 800 wineries in this region alone. Uh, a lot of the North Bay has pretty expensive housing and a lot of it is protected open space. So in Marin County, 58% of it is protected open space so you can't build any houses on it so the, the houses are that are there are quite expensive one of the downsides is you can't easily take public transportation to get to the rest of the bay area north bay is the least populated subregion right below it is east bay and it is the most populated subregion of the bay area so you can get to east bay by crossing the bay bridge here from san francisco and oakland is the largest city in the East Bay, it's the third largest in the Bay Area. The East Bay is a diverse mix of urban and suburban neighborhoods, so it's attractive to a lot of people. The housing prices are a little bit less expensive and a lot of people are able to commute to San Francisco for work fairly quickly. So if you're taking BART, the main public transportation system from over here around Walnut Creek, you can actually get to downtown San Francisco faster than you can taking public transportation from the west side of the city. So a lot of people live in East Bay and work in San Francisco. And um, the East Bay has a lot of really cool big parks and, and green spaces as well. If you keep heading south, you get to South Bay. San Jose is the biggest city in not only South Bay, but the entire Bay Area. So there are more people living there than San Francisco. However, it is much more spread out and there's less of a downtown feel. It's uh, a little bit more suburban and neighborhoody feeling than downtown San Francisco. So a lot of big tech companies down there like Apple, PayPal, Adobe, and there are professional sports stadiums there. So the SAP Center is where the San Jose Sharks play and the Levi Stadium is where the San Francisco 49ers home stadium is. South Bay used to have more affordable housing prices, but they've gone up pretty, pretty dramatically in recent years as well. Moving west, we get to the peninsula, and it's worth noting that the boundary between South Bay and the peninsula is debatable, but in, this, in general, this area is considered the peninsula. So when a lot of people think of the peninsula, they think of Stanford or tech companies, and that is definitely true, but there's also these smaller coastal towns that have more of a small town vibe. And then there's like these really woodsy, uh, redwoody forest areas that are more sparsely populated and, and feel like you're living in the middle of the woods. 
The housing prices in this area by the San Francisco Bay are quite high because many of the highest paying jobs in the Bay Area are located right around here, so it makes sense to buy a home there. It is quite expensive. One of the interesting things about living in the Bay Area is the weather. So it varies quite dramatically. Even in San Francisco, where it's only seven miles wide by seven miles high, there are many different microclimates. So the cold air comes in over the ocean and blows over the city. It brings the fog in. There are some hills right in this area that, that block the fog and the wind. So many days, the Mission District, it's nice and sunny and in the sunset, area it's you know foggy and a little bit colder so the differences get even more dramatic once you start moving east so oakland is usually quite a bit warmer than san francisco and then once you pass these hills they're pretty high hills the weather changes entirely over here in the further east bay so one time when i first moved to the bay area i was living in the inner sunset and I went to a party in Lafayette. It was summertime, but it was you know 65 degrees in San Francisco. I had a jeans and a sweatshirt on and I drove to Lafayette and by the time I got out of my car, it was 95 degrees and I realized that the party was a pool party. So it is pretty, pretty wild how quickly the weather can change here. I think most people are very, very surprised by the dramatic shift in temperature. So same thing happens down here along the coast. You get more fog and wind. There's a range of hills right here, so uh, closer to the bay is a little bit warmer. San Jose is warmer than San Francisco, and the same thing happens up here in North Bay. So these areas are quite cold, but there's a big range of hills right here, which kind of shields the rest of the area, and it heats up quite quickly, and it is quite a bit warmer than the coast. Another thing to note about living in the Bay Area is that traffic is pretty intense. Can take several hours to get from one part of the bay area to the other so if you are working and have to go into the office every day that is something you'll definitely want to keep in mind the good news is the public transit is pretty good and we have bart which goes all over the bay area except for the north bay so it goes through a lot of san francisco down to the peninsula to the airport it also goes all over east bay and even goes down to the south bay to san jose also, Caltrain is a pretty popular transit choice, so it goes from Gilroy all the way to San Francisco, and a lot of people take that to and from work who are on this side of the peninsula. North Bay, there is a ferry that accesses different parts of the Bay Area, but it is a little bit more isolated public transit-wise than the rest of the areas. Hopefully you found this video helpful, and while it's just scratching the surface, if you have more detailed questions, don't hesitate to give me a call. My contact information is in the description below. If you like this video and want to see more like it, don't forget to like and subscribe. This channel is all about living in the Bay Area.